What's going on everybody? Today we're inspecting and removing and trying to find the problem with the clutch on my 2015 Yamaha FJ09. Now the symptom this bike has is clutch slip. Basically on any gear, including third and higher, it slips if you go wide open throttle when it passes through peak power. Right around 8, 9, 10,000 RPM, if you leaned into it, it'll just wow. You don't really accelerate, you kind of feel the front end droop as the acceleration slows down and all the power just gets put up into the clutch, not to the rear wheel. So today we're going to disassemble it, take it apart, measure all the components to find out if anything's out of spec, and then hopefully, you know, find a problem or put it back together. We will be following a service manual for this job. And the first thing the manual tells you to do is drain the oil. And uh, we're not going to do that because I'm almost certain we can get away with just taking off the cover here and not having a bunch of oil spill out. I've told this problem to a couple of friends of mine and they've all kind of said the same thing is they recommend disassembling the clutch and deglazing the steel discs, like the in between the friction plates, you have the steel discs go through a Scotch-Brite, or if you have a sandblaster, go through and sandblast them to change the texture on them and kind of break it up because the steel disc can get glazed and polished and smooth. So I plan to go in there and try and do that if uh, everything else measures all right. That's about it, let's get into it. So besides taking off the housing, which is our obvious first step, which are all five millimeter bolts going around the perimeter, you have to get the clutch cable disconnected from the pull lever here. And there's a couple ways you could do it. You could disassemble the snap ring here and pull this all off the main shaft that goes into the housing, or, there's a little sheet metal tab down behind here that will enable you to get the clutch uh, cable out of this little arm here. And that's going to be my plan of a tag. There we go. To create a bit more room down at the clutch cover end, I just wound this adjustment in a few turns to give more slack. Okay, all the bolts are out. This little wiring harness can just stay on the side. Here goes nothing. I have to rotate this pivot arm a little. Come on. Easy. See, you don't need to drain the oil. Damn, how's lying to you? Well, you gotta drain the oil, you know, and take it apart the internal components. This outer friction plate tab lines up with the circle on the clutch housing. There's another circle, right? You see the stack? This is the outer one. This is the dot. I've got all my paper towel laid out here so I can lay it out in sequence, just flop it over and keep it all laid out in order. So now we're gonna undo these. They're just 10 mils, knock them all loose in a cross star pattern, and then wind them out evenly. Now all the friction discs are lined up with the triangle. There's a triangle on the housing right here and they go all the way back. Okay, so as you see, we've gone over and taken out all the clutch parts and I've measured them all and I've got an average spec on all of them. Basically, all the springs are in spec. The minimum spec is 49.88 millimeters and they all measure around 51.25 millimeters. It's a spring, you know, so it's like how much pressure do you put on it, but they all are clearly above 51, that's for sure. The steel discs should be between 75 and 83 thousandths of an inch, and they all measure between 78 and 79 thou, so they'll have at least three to four thousandths of extra life in them, and they've got about four to five thou of wear on them, basically from brand new, if it 83 is brand new. Then the friction discs, they should measure between 115 thou and 121, or that's 0.115 inches to 0.121 and they all measure between 0.118 and 0.119. So 118 to 119, which is plenty of room. Once again, about three to four thousandths of an inch of life left in them. And they've seen about uh, two to three thousandths of wear. So they're right in the middle of their lifespan. They look good. The discs aren't burnt. There's no smearing. There's no bad smell of burning like it's had a bunch of clutch drops or launches. So now the question comes of why is the clutch slipping? And what I've heard online and what I've read and talked to a couple people about is that the discs glaze, not just in particular to this bike, but all bikes in general, just that they glaze. You got a wet clutch going on here. You got a lot of polishing happening, basically of all the friction rubbing against the discs. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through with some Scotch-Brite and just clean up the surface, just kind of break up the crust. I'm not trying to remove material, just change the pattern of wear on the surface so that it bites a little better, it gives it a fresh surface to engage with. Also, as you see in this clip, the drive gear and the hub seems to be a little bit worn. 
Uh, I hear a chuttering at idle when you are clutched out in neutral and you go, bah, bah, it kind of, <clears throat> it has like a pretty chunky sound that it doesn't have when you're clutched in. So I have a feeling the rubber isolators on the backside of the clutch housing that interfaces between the primary driven gear and the clutch housing are a little bit worn out because I've seen people servicing those. So that may be something I need replacing in the future, but this is all just like a fix until I go to a slipper clutch from an XSR because that's a long-term plan for this bike. So really, I just want to fix the clutch, keep it alive, keep it going for a little bit longer so that I can keep the bike rolling before I put in a slipper clutch. So as for the clutch boss and clutch housing wear, there is slight pitting. It's a little bit, it's not deep. Like I can run my finger over it and I can feel little bits of grooves, but I don't think it's enough for the plates to get hung up in them. That is in the manual to check. It doesn't give a spec for the pitting. It just says any pitting like remove the pitting or replace the housing. And you could take a file and go in there and smooth out things and sandpaper them all off, but then I'd have to take off the housing to sandpaper it and clean it before I reinstall it. I just don't want to do that. So, so I'm going to leave it as it is. I'm going to sand up all the discs, not the friction plates, just the discs. And I'm also going to change the sequence of the discs so that you know they're not right back where they want to be. They're in a new, unfamiliar, <laughs> the grabby, textured spot where they hopefully will bite really well. So I've scrubbed all the discs and then cleaned them off with brake clean. You can see they're not as shiny. They have a little bit of a scratchy surface to them, which is what I want. Uh, they're clean. I'm just going to rub them with a uh, motorcycle oil that's meant for the spike so that they don't go in dry and burn up. So get just a thin film of oil on them and then we'll stack them back in the bike. All right, now comes time to reinstall the clutch. You can see this is the stack in the service manual here, and you see there's a note between there's five, seven, five different types of parts. Five is the wide tab on the friction plate, and seven is the narrow thin tab on the friction plate. So you're going to put in friction, steel, friction that are wide, and then you're going to go to steel, and then you're going to go to thin friction plates for two, and then you're going to go back to wide. And then when you get to the end, we got to talk about you got to set the offset install the last friction plate one offset from the other friction plates two making sure to align a projection with the mark so essentially just like this right so you gotta line up these tabs are mostly in this groove and the last one goes one notch over to line up with mark a there we showed you this as we were taking it apart but it's something to note as you put it together you can see right here this is a thick tab this is a thin tab it doesn't have like any nub on it from the side thick thin as for the steel discs, the manual doesn't say anything about this, but the internet sure does. You've got one side that's kind of a sharper edge, and then you've got the other side, which is rounded. The internet basically says either it doesn't matter or put the rounded side facing away from the bike, not like in towards the engine, but pointing out towards me at the camera so that when you pull the clutch, the rounded edge is more easily disengaging and riding on the clutch boss uh, so that it doesn't bind. Uh, some people say it doesn't matter. Some people say it does. After reading what some Yamaha techs say online, I'm going to put the rounded edge facing away towards the camera, away from the bike. Whatever you do, just put them all in one direction because it apparently affects the surface area of the uh, matching friction plate that rubs next to it. All right, so we've already got one friction in there. Thin tab. Same alignment. All right, now we've got to put on our last friction disc. We've got our pressure plate all clean. There's no specific orientation to the pressure plate. Like there's no dots on these little standoffs here and there is no asymmetries in the pressure plates. So I think we're all good on that front. The important part is that we line up one of these friction plate tabs offset with the other ones. Offset. Like that. And we go like this. All right, you got your pressure plate springs. So I forgot to film it, my apologies, but putting on the clutch cover is pretty straightforward. You want the pull arm that's in the center of the pressure plate having its teeth pointing down at about four o'clock-ish, perpendicular to this arm here intersecting the clutch cover so that they can be picked up by the gear teeth on the end of the clutch cover shaft right here. Then you basically want this pull arm kind of pointing out like this so that as it grabs, it rotates in. The goal is to have this arrow line up with this little indentation on the arm. And as you can see, we got it pretty good. Now what's left to do is to put on the clutch cover housing bolts. All the perimeter bolts are torqued to 8.7 foot pounds. Don't forget to put your little clutch cover here on that goes under these couple bolts here.
okay, so I lied. It wasn't actually that easy to get this pull arm straightened out. What I ended up doing is I installed it with too little angle and I went to go push it on and it swung like all the way over here before it got resistance. So that was no good. What I ended up doing was just leaving the clutch cover attached with all the perimeter bolts and then just undoing the little snap ring here, pulling off the washer, undoing this little spring by just like pulling forward and sliding it off the little notch it rests on and then just lift up the pull arm, spin it to where you want it, drop it back down and put the snap ring back on. It's not a big deal. It's pretty resilient. And now everything's good. I also used this little adjustment knob to dial in the lever free play. It's supposed to be 10 to 15 millimeters as per the Yamaha spec. I believe they measure it with a ruler along this angle here. So this distance and that distance. Well, that's a wrap on the clutch inspection, disassembly and reassembly on my 2015 Yamaha FJ09. Now this would apply to similar bikes like the MT09, FZ09 and XSR without the slipper clutch. After taking it for a rip, the thing holds and I couldn't be happier. It even feels livelier in second gear. It's almost like it was slipping more than I thought it was. I don't know, but it holds and I'm hoping it holds for as long as it takes until I get a slipper clutch in this thing because that'd be a sweet upgrade. Uh, I'm not much of a track guy. I just think that'd be a really cool upgrade. And I think a lot of you would want to see that. So if you would want to see that, drop a comment down below. I hope this helped you disassemble and reassemble your clutch. I'll have all the torque specs in the description down below. As always, thanks for watching and have a good day.